It's been nearly two years since Russia's initial invasion of Ukraine, and the war continues to change the shape of Europe. Turkey's parliament this week approved Sweden's bid to become the 32nd member of NATO. Sweden applied for membership alongside Finland following Putin's invasion. Finland's membership was finalized last year. But Sweden has remained in wait. Its fate now hinges on approval from Hungary, whose prime minister has invited his Swedish counterpart to Budapest for negotiations. NATO membership Rules say an attack on one is an attack on all. That means in the event of a cata catastrophe, the U.S. would defend Sweden at a time when American voters and some leaders question the necessity of our involvement abroad. Charles Kupchan joins me now. He's a senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations and professor of international affairs at Georgetown University. Charles, it's good to have you back again. We know what NATO membership well, you tell me, why is NATO membership important for Sweden? And then more importantly, what does Sweden bring to the table in return for NATO? Well, the fact that Sweden and Finland, both of which were neutral countries for decades, have decided to end neutrality and want the security that comes with NATO membership, it speaks to what a strategic mistake Putin made in invading Ukraine. He wanted to weaken NATO. He wanted to roll back the post-Cold War order, and instead he's fighting hard and not doing very well in Ukraine, and NATO is much stronger than it used to be, more troops on the eastern flank, and now two neutral countries, Finland and Sweden, joining NATO. Sweden is a big country, strategically located in the high north, important for security in the Baltic Sea and also the sea lanes of communication between northern Russia and the North Atlantic. They spend more than 2% of GDP on defense, which is the NATO benchmark. So they bring to the table a lot of assets when it comes to strengthening the Western alliance and making sure that Russia does not threaten the West. Turkey was delaying for a while. Now they're on board. Um, what got resolved and was uh, the deal sweetened for Turkey by any of the other NATO members? Well, Turkey complained that the Swedes were not being sufficiently vigilant in countering the Kurdish separatist group, the PKK, some of whose members were in Sweden, some of whom raised money in Sweden. And what we've seen Sweden do is tighten its anti-terrorism laws, crack down on a couple people that the Swedes wanted, excuse me, the Turks wanted arrested or extradited. They've also dropped a weapons transfer ban that existed with uh, Turkey. Uh, and the other thing I think is the Turks were looking for some F-16s and some upgrades to their existing F-16s from the United States. That deal has not gone through, but I think it is more likely to go forward now that Turkey is ready to let Sweden into NATO. So those are the two big things, crack down on Kurdish separatists, get an arms sales from the United States. What should we know about then Hungary that being the last uh, last vote blocking? You know, Hungary uh, is a troublemaker. Its prime minister, Viktor Orban, is Europe's bad boy. He basically is standing with Turkey to try to exact some compromises. Exactly what? We don't know. The European Union and NATO criticize Hungary and Orban for backsliding on democracy. The may be saying, please back off. But bottom line here is he is not going to reign on the parade. Now that Turkey has moved, I expect Hungary to follow suit. So I think we'll see Sweden join NATO sometime in the next few months after we see ratification by the Hungarian parliament. And finally, Charles, we're in an election year, a presidential election year. How should uh, voters think intelligently about what's at stake in terms of NATO's role, uh, the way President Biden has seen it, and then uh, the way uh, former President Trump would see it, given his past practices. Um, how, how should people think about how to assess that issue? Well, you know, NATO is back in business at the center of American security policy because Russia has invaded Ukraine and demonstrated malign intent. And who knows? It's possible that Russia could attack a NATO member. And as a consequence, the United States has reinvested in the alliance. The alliance has reinvested in partnership with the United States. During his first term and during his presidency, uh, Mr. Trump talked about 
withdrawing from NATO. Some concern that if he is reelected, he may again draw, attempt to withdraw from NATO. I think it's unlikely, and that's in part because NATO enjoys strong support on both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats alike. And now that Russia does pose a renewed threat to Europe, I think we're likely to see NATO beef up its eastern flank and enjoy solidarity and unity for the foreseeable future, no matter who wins the next presidential election. Charles Kupchan, Georgetown University professor and senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. Thanks so much.